Joining me from Houston at the IHS Energy Sarah Week Conference is Camille Zakiroff, CEO of Targeen Oil Field Services. Good That's to right. see you here. Good morning. You were speaking at a panel about Russian sanctions, and there have been sanctions, both the U.S. and EU, implemented against Russia due to the conflict in Ukraine. Surprisingly, these sanctions, in your view, are not having the perhaps intended effect. Russian oil production is alive and well. Well, they do have effect, right? Uh, they do have effect on the state. They do have effect on the financial situation. Yes, we are. Uh, we feel shortage of the um, loan money, etc. Um, but not on the oil industry. Uh, that's, that's strangely enough, and ironically, the uh, effect is not dramatic. The major effect uh, hit probably the state's budget, but the oil companies are enjoying the weak ruble currently, and their cost basis uh, are majorly on the ruble, so the drop of oil prices uh, which happened together with the drop of ruble, doesn't hit them that much. So as a result, they're not cutting uh, dramatically their capex for the next year, and this year and next year. They're, yes, they're shifting some of the uh, long-term projects uh, several years uh, ahead, but uh, the daily production is quite stable. Uh, number of jobs there, uh, number of... Uh, uh, we're not cutting uh, uh, people, right? We're not cutting the uh, uh, personnel. We're not cutting the number of, uh, of volumes of the jobs and contracts. That's quite an interesting uh, impact. So what are you seeing with your business in terms of, did you see a pickup this year compared to last year? That's not a huge pickup, but uh, that's definitely the opportunity uh, for us because uh, some of the companies cannot um, I mean, some of the international companies that used to import some of the goods and services cannot do so. And that's definitely the uh, opportunity for the companies who work locally. Uh, and it's also a good opportunity for the companies with the ruble cost basis, just like us. Uh, all of a sudden, we become uh, more uh, competitive than uh, international companies uh, whose uh, cost basis on the foreign currency. So it's actually good to be local. Strangely enough. Would you be willing to entertain a partnership with any U.S. Oh, absolutely. company? Or absolutely. Others? Absolutely. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Yes, I'm here for this conference, but uh, we're also in discussion with the number of uh, uh, U.S. companies uh, on partnerships of uh, various sorts. Because the uh, uh, Russian market is one of the largest markets uh, uh, in the world. Uh, it's uneasy. Uh, market. You need to learn, you need to kind of, uh, uh, you know, to be successful, you need to become local eventually, right? Uh, uh, assimilate yourself. Uh, that takes time and effort. And that's something that we can uh, offer to our potential partners that we would be opening the market for them immediately, kind of uh, next day uh, after the deal. So, yes, we're looking for the partnerships and we're discussing them. Do you need the foreign capital in order to expand your business? Because the sanctions have had an impact yeah, yeah. on the financial system. Luckily, uh, and talking about my company, uh, we don't feel much of shortage uh, in funds. We can uh, raise more money uh, locally in Russia. Uh, there are some funds available. So we're not looking for the, currently not looking for the f uh, finance, we're looking for the uh, technological, uh, technologically advanced companies, uh, the companies who want to expand to new markets, the companies who want to move into Russia and uh, shorten up the learning curve. Normally when you enter the new market it takes you time to learn and uh, to learn the client, to learn the uh, business climate. If you want to shorten up this uh, learning, uh, we are certainly the people who uh, to help. You are operating in numerous fields. You mm -hmm. operate in Siberia, for instance. Right, right. Uh, the sanctions do have an impact, and there is no production in the Arctic, in the shale properties. Mm -hmm. So are you worried that there will be a, lag, uh, a lagging effect, that oil production will drop significantly because you're not planning ahead for the future? I don't expect a uh, uh, big uh, deep down in, in terms of production. There will be slight uh, this year, but uh, that uh, slight deep uh, is only due to uh, operators locally are kind of also learning their way in the new uh, environment. 
uh, learning how to work in the new environment. And it looks like they will be capable of stabilizing the, the production. Uh, and if you can, uh, if you can think that uh, most of Russian production, we are talking 95% or so, is coming from the uh, traditional uh, oil fields. Uh, we're not producing much from Arctic, we're not producing much from deep waters, we're not producing much from uh, uh, shale. And that those are the areas that are banned by the sanctions. So uh, by the time we would uh, start producing from Arctic and deep water, I'm pretty sure uh, Russia will be capable of building up those technologies that are required. And I hope that the sanctions will uh, uh, finish uh, much before that. Kamil Zakirov, great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.